Okay, we will start with an oral reading of the lines. Aeneas scapulum inter ea conscendit, et omnum prospectum late pelago petit. Anthea sequem yactatum venta videat, fergiasque verimis aut capin, aut calcius impupibus arma caeci. All right, let's see. Well, the first phrase, of course, is going to go to this comma. Aeneas is our nominative subject. Scopulum, notice that U-M is an accusative noun, which mean is, means it is the direct object of whatever Aeneas is doing. Inter ea is just an adverb. So apparently Aeneas, here we are at our verb, conscendits the scapula. Meanwhile, Aeneas does something here. Et omnum prospectum late pelago petit. Okay, I bet you recognize this noun adjective here right here. Omnum modifies prospectum. Late here is just an adverb. Pelago is a neowab, a noun in the ablative without a preposition. In this instance, I think it shows place where. And petit is our verb. Notice we have not received another nominative, so we're going to assume that Aeneas is a subject. Aeneas, petit, omnum, prospectum. Latte, again, is an adverb, and Pelago talks about where all this is taking place. The next section is a little more interesting. Anthea is a pesky Greek accusative. Anthea, see quem. Quem actually modifies anthea. We would probably say, the best way to translate it in English would be, if anything of anthea's because it's really aliquem. If anything of Antheus. But again, this is accusative, so we have to wait and see what's going on with anything of Antheus. Before we can find out, we have yactatum, which of course is also accusative. It is a participle modifying Anthea. So if anything of Antheus, yactatum, over here we have wento, which is an ablative because yaktatum is a perfect passive participle. Whenever you have something passive, you need an ablative of means or agent. So by the wind. But we're still waiting to see. What about Anthea? By, tossed around by the wind. Oh, widiat. Here's your verb. If he could see widiat, subjunctive present, anything of Anthea, yaktatum, wento. And then, so Anthea, yaktatum, yaktatum is the direct object of Wittiat. But Virgil goes on to give us more things that are also direct objects of Wittiat. Fergias modifies the biremis here. So apparently he wants to find Anthea and the Fergias biremis. Or Capen, another accusative. Or what else does he want to find? Arma. Another accusative there. Don't forget, we have a noun adjective pair right here. Kelsis, pupibus here. And kaiki is simply a genitive noun modifying arma. So once again, we have Aeneas, who does this verb, conscendit, and he does this verb to the scopulum. And Aeneas petits, omnum prospectum, on the pelago. And then we have Aeneas Widiat, Anthea, who is Yactatum, by the wind, and we have Aeneas looking also for Fergias Beremis, out Capen, out Arma. There are several things he was hoping to find. So we will keep going. Nawem in conspectu nolam, tris litore kervos prospicit errantis, hos tota armenta sequentor. Uh, tergo, et longum per valis pascater agmen. Okay, here's a nice phrase, a good place to stop. Nawem in conspectu nullam. Notice that nawem and nullam make another noun adjective pair. We have a prepositional phrase here, in conspectu. And of course, our nawem is accusative. Hmm. We have an accusative, and we don't have a verb, and we don't have a subject. Let's assume 
We're going to have to wait a second. Maybe Aeneas is still the subject. Tris litore kervos prospicit errantis. Oh, look, there's our verb. Tris goes with kervos. It should be trace, but you know how Virgil likes to do that. So that's another accusative there. Litore, of course, is a neowab, not in the ablative without a preposition. Oh, and here's our verb, prospicit. And we will assume that Aeneas is still the subject. So Aeneas prospicit nawem nullum, and he prospicits tres kervos. Now, what's up with this Arantus? Arantus is a participle. Notice the NT. What kind of participle is it? Present active, NT. And it should be an ES, but you know Virgil likes to use that IS. And it modifies the three deer. Okay, let's keep going. Host tota armenta sequentur ad tergo, et longum per vales pascator agmen. Oh, dirty pool here. Notice, host is accused of plural, and it refers to the trees kervos up above. And then we have tota armenta, which is either nominative or accusative neuter plural. But we've already got an accusative over here with hosts, so we can assume that tota armenta is most likely nominative. And that is indeed true because we can see that our verb sequentor is plural, nt. So tota armenta is the subject of sequentor. Host kervos is the direct object. Don't fall for this tur ending and tur ending on sequentor. That's a passive ending. But sequor is a deponent verb, which means that it looks passive and is translated actively. So this part would go tota armenta sequentor, hos kervos, and then the prepositional phrase a tergo. And then we'll keep going some more. Let's see. Et longum per wallas pascator agmen. Okay, we have a noun adjective pair with longum and agmen, kind of far apart, but you can handle that because you're super cool. And we have a prepositional phrase here. So I will tell you that longum, agmen, is of course the singular subject for pascator, and then per wallis is just a prepositional phrase. And that is the end of lines 180 through 186. Great job.